Uh, during the course of the investigation, the Commission has received uh, on a continuing basis a massive amount of documentation. Uh, each uh, receipt of documentation has provided further leads for the Commission uh, to uh, review and to follow up and we expect the uh, uh, report to be released early in the new year. The wait is almost over. Maybe. The RCMP Civilian Review and Complaints Commission says the investigation into the gun grab in High River is nearly done. Results should be released in the coming months. Now, this update comes after multiple delays into the report. Residents are still demanding answers as to why the Mounties confiscated guns from homes abandoned due to flooding, why doors were kicked in. John Barlow is the MP for the High River area, joins me now in Ottawa. You heard Mr. McPhail there. This was originally supposed to be October 2013. I'm guessing some people just want to move on, but others are saying, why is it taking so long? Yeah, it's, it's definitely two, uh, two areas, Brian. It, um, we need to bring some closure to this. Uh, people want to know uh, some answers to some questions that are still lingering out there. Uh, and a lot of people just want to move on. Uh, we want to uh, you know, move on with uh, the re rebuilding and reconstruction of High River. And it's difficult to do that while these uh, issues are still sort of hovering over that community right now. Yeah, but, but without figuring out what happened, this could lead, if there is wrongdoing on the part of the RCMP, and I think that you know, ourselves and researchers like Dennis Young have found sufficient evidence that something happened that shouldn't have, this leaves other communities vulnerable if the RCMP doesn't have rules in place or a review. So it has to be done. Absolutely, and uh, you know, uh, even though I, I, my writings McLeod, which includes High River, I've had uh, emails and phone calls from uh, Canadians across the country. And so this, this isn't just an issue that, that affects High River. Obviously that was the, the focal point, um, mm -hmm. but uh, the, the concern from residents across the country is, will this, could this happen in my community as well? And that's something we need to address. I know during the, the nomination race, you took a different viewpoint on this, but now you're in Parliament, you have uh, taken up the fight that Scott Reed started with order paper questions. And mm -hmm. those are MPs can place any question down and the government must respond. You've got a long list. I mean, it, this is, let me just show people. These are all questions. See that tiny type? Those are all questions detailed. So I just want to go over two of them right now and ask you why you're looking for this. So from the order paper question, what are the definitions of illegally stored firearms, carelessly stored firearms, and unsafe storage as accepted and enforced by the RCMP? And then there's this one. Are there any circumstances under which these definitions are expanded or altered in such a way that it impacts the extent to which the RCMP can enforce them? Is there something specific you're looking for there? Because Is, is this because of the conflicting reports of the, the Mountie saying, we only took this, and residents saying, no, no, I followed the law? Yeah, it's definitely an opportunity for me to try and uh, address the rumor mill that's out there. And that's really what makes this so difficult is nobody knows what the truth is right now. And that's why I'm so eager to get this report out sooner rather than later so that we can address these questions. And the, the, those order paper questions are is there's so many um, conflicting reports out there that, uh, you know, my, my firearms were safely stored. Uh, they were in a locker. The triggers were locked. Uh, some triggers were removed. And yet these, still, these firearms were still taken. Uh, so I want to make sure or have answers to these questions. Uh, what is your definition uh, in black and white of a safely stored firearm? And if that's that definition, then why were these firearms taken? The door kickings in, uh, that affected even more homes, more families, and uh, it, it's taken some people a long time to get compensation. It took some people a long time just to get their door back on. Is that an issue that you hear about still? People are concerned, like, why'd they kick it in? Why didn't they just break the little glass and and undo the lock? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and that's probably the, the, biggest, the biggest battle of this, Brian, is that, that perception that, uh, that RCMP were going around High River kicking down doors. And, and that really gave uh, residents uh, an uneasy feeling of, uh, of not being safe in your community where um, the RCMP there, we've always trusted them for generations mm -hmm. to, to protect our communities. Um, and the RCMP detachment in High River, which had nothing to do with any of this, is really having a difficult time um, repairing that relationship with the residents of High River because of all these things that went on. Um, and just to, you know, although there were lots, lots kicked in, I've spoken with many locksmiths that, who were there uh, and helped pick hundreds of locks. Uh, but unfortunately, there was more than a thousand that were kicked in as well. And that's, yeah. you know, that's unfortunate. Yeah, and, and it's shocking, I think, to most Canadians because, as you say, you trust the police, whether it's the RCMP or your local police force, 
and that trust, one, once it's broken, it does take a while to repair. Absolutely, and that's, that's so important that we have this, uh, this review uh, completed, and I know that now they said uh, early in January, I hope they stick to that deadline, uh, because we cannot start this healing process in High River, and like I said, across the country, until these questions are answered. All right, John Barlow, MP4 McLeod, thank you so much. Well.